the play it takes place in 1911 in a rooming house in Pittsburgh in the Hill District. In fact, all of his plays in the 20th century cycle take place in the Hill District, which is an African-American community that really is self-sufficient. In this play, all of the characters, the, the majority of the characters are dealing with issues of displacement and really trying to reconnect themselves in, in stronger ways to themselves and to the larger um, and at the same time fundamental issues of seeking that answer to the question of or that search for self-sufficiency. What Mr. Johnson say down there? I told him if I had four or five fellas, I can go out here and get me some tools and, and make open up my own shop instead of working for Mr. Olowski. Go out, out, out here and give me four or five fellas and teach them how to make pots and pans. One man making 10 pots is five men making 50. He told me he'd think about it. That search for self-sufficiency is one of the engines that drives this play, that self-sufficiency manifested in finding one's song, finding uh, that song being more than just one's purpose in life. It's, it is the direction that one must and needs to take in order to be fulfilled, either alone or with the someone else. It's a groundedness and, and establishing a greater comfortability with who one is as a person, where they are at that moment in time. Not projecting beyond that, understanding where, where they have come from, but at the same time being ready because of this discovery of self-sufficiency and claiming this self-sufficiency, being able to move forward. Then we went around that bend in that road, got around that bend, and all of a sudden, we ain't in the same place. Turn around that bend, and everything seemed twice as big as it was. The trees and everything, bigger than life. Sparrows, bigger than eagles. I turned and looked at this fellow, and he had this light coming out of him. I had to cover up my eyes to keep from being blinded. He's shining. He's shining like new money with that light. He shines and it seemed like all the light seeped out of him. And then he was gone. And that is a, um, a quest that all human beings go through. You know, how many times when we said, we've said as kids, when I grow up, I'm going to you know, telling our parents that, when I'm growing up, I'm not going to, I'm going to do it this way. And then when we get adults, we hear our parents' voices and say, oh God, I'm sounding like my mother. I'm sounding like my dad. Okay. My daddy called me to him, said he'd been thinking about me and that it grieved him to see me in the world carrying other people's songs and not having one of my own. Said he was going to show me how to find my song. Then he carried me further into this big place until we come to this ocean. Then he showed me something. I ain't got words to tell you. I think one of the primary hallmarks of a Wilson play, in fact, many um, actors who have performed a, a, number, a number of his works, have made the same statement and that his plays are noted for the, these amazingly poetic and beautifully written and constructed arias for the actors. Um, and that the arias that will allow the actor to traverse such an amazing emotional landscape. Woke up one morning and she was gone just took off to parts unknown. I woke up that morning and the only thing I could do was look around for my shoes. I woke up and got out of there, found my shoes and took off. That's the only thing I could think of to do. She ain't said nothing? 
I just looked around for my shoes and got out of there. Jack ain't said nothing either. He just walked off. Some men do that. Women too. I ain't gone off looking for her. I just let her go. Um, his plays are also noted for the specificity of an African American experience, their groundedness in that, and and and, it's, and the play's abilities to bridge the hyphen of Africanness and Americanness, and and find a, a unique wholeness in in that dichotomy. There are tremendously beautiful metaphors. All of his plays um, address some issue of the great migration uh, in very telling ways. Um, his plays also, metaphorically, are about family. My name is Harold Loomis. This is my daughter, Zonia. Where are you coming from? I come from all over. Whichever way the road takes us, that's the way we go. If you're looking for a job, I'm working putting in that road down there by the bridge. They can't get enough men. It's always looking to take somebody on. I'm looking for a woman named Martha Loomis. That's my wife. Got married legal with the papers and all. The beauty of family, the disjointedness of family at times, um, the necessity of family, um, with all the thorns as well as all of the roses that we all know that families can, can have and uh, that are attributed to, to that experience, that familial experience. His plays are also, I feel, accessible to a world audience because he writes so specifically about the human condition and, um, and does it in such a unique way with an amazingly gifted voice. <coughs> He is one of the most important, if, and in my estimation, the most important 20th century American playwright, particularly in the volume of work that he uh, created, and specifically with his 20th century cycle, um, and, the, and specifically uh, as an African-American playwright. Um, the, 20th century cycle, he decided to write a play for every decade of the 20th century, chronicling the lives of African Americans in the, uh, in the United States. And it is a major, major achievement. When you look at these works uh, in toto, no other playwright that I am aware of has done anything that is as, as comparable to that in such a short period of time. I, you know, unfortunately, it was taken away from us all far, far too early. Um, and he, the theatrical landscape is a little, is very diminished, I think, um, because he is no longer here. But we do have his works that continually speak to an African-American presence and the human presence uh, within the United States and the world. Look at you. You're growing too fast. Your bones getting big every day. I don't want you getting grown on me. Don't you get grown on me too soon. I'm gonna find your mama. She's around here somewhere. I can smell her. Mm -hmm.